Hello and welcome to another 528 Games Lab. In this video I'm going to make some more progress with my game Hubris Solaris. Specifically I'm going to cover how I'm using arrays to generate my cube worlds. For this particular video I'm only interested in a horizontal slice of the world, but in future videos I'm going to show how I then generate the full cubes for gameplay. I'll also be covering some aspects like dealing with performance issues, etc. So join me in some other videos for that. So the first thing I need to do is create a coroutine. And that coroutine is going to call a method called generate planets. And I'm going to use a queue to push planets onto so that I can process that queue of planet generation uh, at a pace that the device that the game is on can deal with. So I'm going to also be doing that in a coroutine. So I need also a planet class. So let's generate a planet class. And I also want to generate a random number of planets. So when the player scans the area they're in, a random number of planets will be generated. So let's iterate through the number of planets and queue up a planet to be generated. And let's also wait a random number, number of seconds just so that the scan or planet generation seems a little bit organic. Let's change this to a for loop so that I can use the index of the loop as the seed for the planet generation. So my planet right now only needs two things. It needs the seed and it also needs uh, the size of the planet. So let's create those two properties now. And for now, let's just set the size to something like 25 and see how we get on with that. And let's initialize those properties from the constructor. Okay, so the next thing I need is a data structure to hold the metadata for each planet and for this for now I just need a two-dimensional array to hold the terrain or cell data of the planet. In a future video I'm going to have to change this to a three-dimensional array to represent the cube but for now this should suffice. So the other thing I need to do is hold a reference to all the different terrain types I have in my game. And in this case I have 17. So I need to create a data structure to hold those 17 different types of cube. And for this I can just use a list and I'll represent each cube in a class called terrain data. So I need to go ahead and add each cube type to this list. Let's just rename this actually to terrain cell data well, terrain cell data. And this only really needs two things. It needs the prefab type or the prefab name and the probability of that cell.
and I'm just going to set the probability to some arbitrary value for now. And now let's copy this for each one of my cube types and set the probability of those. So the next thing I need is a method to actually generate the metadata for each of the planets. And this is where I'm going to need a nested for loop. So because I have a two dimensional array, I need two for loops. And then within each loop, what I'm going to do is randomly select a cell type to then populate the array with. But what I don't want is a completely random planet. I want the, each planet to be formed of some kind of main composition. So for that, let's create a property called main composition or planet main composition. And let's just set that to soil for now. So now what I'm doing here is setting each cell of the array to one of my cell types. And as I said, I want to select that at random. And now I want to generate the probability of that cell actually being created. So for that, I'm going to just create some probability factor between 0 and 1. So then I'm just going to check that the probability factor is less than the cell type's probability. And if it is, I will use that cell type. If not, I will use the planet's main composition cell type. So I'll just create a quick lambda expression here to, to pull back the cell type which has the name of the main composition of the planet. I just need to change the array to be an array of terrain cell data. Okay, so now I have my planet terrain data. The next thing I need to do is generate a name for the planet. So I also want to generate this at random as well. So let's create a random number for the planet name. And what I'm gonna do is have a predefined list of lots of different planet names that we can choose from. and then just select one of those at random. And then let's just append a number to the end of that planet name. Let's create a random multiplier just to give us a bit more randomization on the planet's name.
Okay, so what I've done is gone to Google and found a whole bunch of planet names. So I've just dragged them into, into Excel and I'm going to crudely create the code for these planet strings. And for now, I'm just going to copy these into the planet class. Later on, I'm going to want to refactor this out of here, but for now, uh, this will do just fine. I'm not too bothered about the space at the end of the names because I can trim that out in code. So let's just leave that for now. Okay, so now we have our terrain cell data for the planet. We also have a planet name. We just need to call the generate planet method. So now we have a queue of planets to generate. We need to generate them in the update method. So the update method will check to see if we have any planets queued up to be generated and if we do we will generate that planet and then add it to a list of scanned planets. At this point the code is fairly lightweight in that we haven't actually generated uh, planet game objects or anything like that. We've just generated the data structures that represent the actual planet. So let's create that list of scanned planets now. And let's reset the scan planets list each time we call generate planets. And then let's add a generated planet to the scanned planets. Next thing I want to do is take away that hard-coded main planet composition and replace that with a randomly generated planet composition. So again, I'm going to select a random terrain type from my list of terrain types. And that's it for today's video. Join me in the next video where I go into a bit more detail about generating the cube planet data. But for now, hope you enjoy the video. Until next time, goodbye.